PTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 9, Part 1. First portion of this lesson, we're going to add a note um, and attach some information to the note. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that you've turned on your tree filter so that you can see everything. And let's see what else. And if we go down to the far right hand corner, we can change our filter to annotation. So the only thing that will be able to be selected will be an annotation. You can see the notes here. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to go into our annotate tab and we're going to put this note flat to the screen. So flat to screen, you can see the grid on there. If we go over and we select our note, unattached note, and we put it wherever we wish it to be on the screen, and then we type it in. Um, I'm just going to type in a few things. I'll type them correctly. And we can get fancier. I think I'm just going to keep it fairly simple here. Now, I'm just going to keep one thing, clamp assembly. Now, what we want to add to that right mouse button, we can add a link. And in this case, www.carrlane.com. And car lane for the tool tip or screen tip. OK. And if we wanted to check that, right mouse button, open the link. OK, now sometimes it does this, and I'm not sure why. Something to do with the external. I'm glad it actually did it. Take off the plus 1, hit Enter, and it should work fine. So for some reason, uh, that site appends something to the end and it doesn't work, or PTC does that. So we're going to look at the online catalog. And we'll go to clamp and assemblies, swing clamps, and swing clamp assemblies. And you can see this one is the one that we've been modeling all along. Shows the dimensions. And you can actually order the. It's uh, under, it's around $75. We have one in the classroom, which is nice for people to see. It's not exactly like the models that we have, but it's, it's close enough to give you an idea of what this tooling fixture is. So what this does is it puts this note on the screen. Back to the model here. Now, the, tool, the uh, filters went back to smart. And sometimes you can't pick up on anything directly on the screen when it's like that. Let's open this up. You can take a look at all the different things that are in here. But here's my annotations. Okay. And let's go back over to the smart filter again and go to annotation. Click on it. And again, you can see you can change it, change the text style even if you wish. You want to make it larger. Change the default on it. And change the color, et cetera, et cetera. So you can make this note anything that you want. The main thing is it's available for you to get the information. I think if you hold down the alternate key and you when you're not in these filters, so for instance, if you're back in the smart and you want to pick on this. Let's see if I can get it to work. Hold down my alternate key, and then it'll do it. So when you're not in the proper tab, or you want to pick on something that the, the uh, cursor won't select, it's because it's in a different um, selection mode. The filter is different. You can hold down your, con your alternate key and then click on that particular thing. So OK. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come up with some views. 
So I'm going to reposition this so that we can see the model in a decent way. And you can see it's, if, it's, if it's in uh, trimetric, that's not so good. So we're going to go over here to a view that looks like we can see all the components fairly easily. And what we can do at this point, we can also turn off everything so we don't have to look at. We'll leave on the spin center, but that's it. So let's say this is a view that we like and we're going to use later. So I'll position it how I want. And we're in the view tab right now. You have saved orientations, reorient. This is an old style menu here. And you'll see that you can actually save this particular, let's say we'll call it um, uh, our view. And we save it. Now we have our view as an option here. If you double click on any of these views, it'll go to them. And now we have the our view. Now, again, you may want a few extra views on here for the model. I'm going to call this one L view. We have them available whenever we want. Let's say we're doing a lot of work on the bottom. We can save a view for that also. So let's say we have a zoomed in view and we like this one. Um, let's call this one uh, edit. Now, people always say, well, how many, how many can I save? You can save as many as you want, thousands, millions of views. How many should you save? Save only the ones that you're going to be using on that project over and over again. Otherwise, it's just as easy to use your, your middle mouse button and to rotate the model to any position you want. Um, the standard views now are available, obviously, where they always have been, but also the new ones that you've created are there in the graphics toolbar. And I think we'll go to the right view, this one right here. And let's go over to the view tab again. And um, how about the render tab? Let's take a look at that. And let's pick on perspective view. There's a perspective view. And you can actually open some of these settings here. And uh, walk through, follow through, fly through. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with the perspective. Custom focal length, etc. And your eye distance. So, something to take a look at, spend some time with once in a while. And I'm going to cancel that one and turn off that. Now, while we're here in the render, we can also render the window, etc. Something you do when the model is done. We're going to just take a look at it now. It takes a little while. It depends on what your rendering settings are, how long it's going to take to do this. And it could uh, depend on your uh, software also. Um, you can actually create a room and, and gallery. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in here. And you can spend some time if you wish. All right, so let's go back over to the model and repaint it. We don't really want to see it there. And the next thing we want to do is we want to change the views themselves to be used for drawings. So we save the views. And the next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at explode. So if we explode the view here, it takes a few seconds. It's going to explode it out. It's not necessarily the view that you want to have. This is a default explode. So default explode is seldom used, seldom needed. And let's see what we've got over here. All right, so we're going to go into exploding the view. But the first thing we want to do is we want to know whether or not this is the view we want to start from. In other words, the position. So let's say we want to put it down a little bit like so. So now we're going to go into the manager, the view manager, and take a look at this. We've got a lot of tabs in here. We're going to start off with the explode. You can see it's a default. We're going to have a new one, whatever you want to call this. It's okay. I'm going to just go hit enter. And I'm going to click on properties. 
and select the edit position. Now, when I do that, first I want to see my options are here. Move with children. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to pick on my swivel, and then I'm going to select the arrow in the direction I want to explode, like so. Now, if I go and I click on the foot, I can do the same thing. It doesn't have any children, so it's not going to hurt to use that same setting. Now, if I used the clamp, you'll see that it moves the whole thing here. But I think before I do that, let's go and select the stud. And let's also select the nut so we can expand it out. And again, if I go down here and pick this, you'll see it moves the whole thing. So basically, if I wanted to, I could expand this up or move this up, but then I'd have to turn around and move some others. So you're going to work with it a little bit until you get a view that you like. Now, it says move with children. I could turn that off, and for instance, I'll come up here and select this, and let's say I want the uh, the ball to come out, and maybe I want the uh, the long stud to come out also. Maybe I'll leave the other one, the other ball where it is. So it's it's really not a bad looking exploded view at this point. We can see all the elements in it, separated it just a decent amount. Now we can we can actually tweak the the uh, rotation if we want with our middle mouse button like so and middle mouse button or check and you can see now we have an exploded position on everything so i'm going to go back over to the list and the one thing i want to check right now i see the little plus sign okay you, know, you can edit you can save but you can also edit save with the right mouse button okay and the little plus sign goes away that's because we change the edit position by rotating around and doing a few things so we don't want to keep that plus sign on there that's very 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 important and the reason is because when we get to orient here we will see that our original r view is has been changed so if we want this to become the r view that we selected chase a before we can save it again and the little plus sign goes away if you don't do that and you go back and you try to use this in a drawing, you might find out that it goes to the R view and it has and it is not the view that you want to see with this exploded uh, positioning in it. Now we can go and delete one of these components and everything else. But this view still remains the same. The view is just like a camera, what it sees at that moment, nothing else. So we did explode and we did orient. Um, we won't do sections in this one right here. Uh, style. Let's create new style. We'll just use the default name. Follow the steps in the book, though. And blank show. OK, wireframe. So what do we want to have it as wireframe? Let's say we'll have this component as wireframe. And how about hidden line? How about this for hidden line? And you can also preview them as you go. No hidden line. How about uh, the nut? Shading. Um, let's just keep uh, the clamp uh, transparent. Well, actually, let's make the clamp transparent. Shading. You don't really have to do these, but we'll do them. How about hidden line? And no hidden line for the other ball. And again, I could have been previewing these to see if this is what I really wanted. And especially with the light color, the ball kind of disappears. So I think I will change that. And you can see that they're all with a different style at this point. So I'm going to click OK. And my style is done. So we've done Explode, Orient, and Style. And there's also one called All. And there's one called Sections, too. You can actually create sections. but Right now, we're not going to do that. Let's just go to All and click on New. And you can leave the combination default. And we will reference originals. Otherwise, we say create copies of this position, uh, of these um, selections. So what this did is it's going to save 
anything that we've done. So it'll have this combination will be using the other elements that we have when we did explode, et cetera, et cetera. So that will be available to us. And you can see down in the corner here, it's going to say the explode in the style state. But that'll be available to us when we go to a drawing um, and we want to show views of the drawing. I'm going to unexplode this. You can see that the style still kept. And let's see if we can shade this. You can see. Like so. And go back to the view manager, style, go back to this default, close. By the way, down here in the bottom left hand corner, you can see these are available to us. Default all. Rotate it around. Now these stay with the model. Everything everything goes into the model. So all your information is re resides in the part. And then the parts go into an assembly. The assembly is really referencing the parts. So the parts are the key to everything. The assembly here is also holding the data for the uh, combination style changes, default, uh, not the default, but the um, explode style, et cetera. And we'll go back to the other one. Rotate it around. And, you know, again, depending on where you want to, you can save this in a particular position on the screen. Now, some people might say, okay, here's my R view because I saved it, exploded, but it's not the explode that I, this is the default explode with the R view. You have to go back and turn on my other explode, not the default explode to see that correctly. And again, you were going to use these when you get to a drawing in lesson 12. So let's see what else we've got here. That's it. This concludes lesson nine.